Welcome back. In this next part of the course, we will be talking about configuring MySQL 8. In this section, we are going to take a look how MySQL can be configured. We are going to look at the configuration file structure, as well as how a parameter can be changed runtime. We will also cover methods available to keep the configuration file in sync with the instance's actual configuration. In this video, we will talk about changing configuration parameters in the configuration file. We will discuss the structure of the MySQL configuration file and the include mechanism of MySQL configuration file. MySQL's main configuration file is my.cnf. It's located either under slash etsy slash my.cnf or slash etsy slash mysql slash my.cnf. Both are considered, if they are present, no matter of additional configuration files which may be present. This mostly affects setups where multiple instances are running on the same box, the etc slash my.cnf will be considered for each one. Configuration is broken into sections. Only MySQL D section will be read by the server itself. Note the D as in daemon at the end of MySQL D. The rest of the sections are for clients. For example, a generic client section might be read by any client. This can be the MySQL command line client, MySQL dump or MySQL bin logs, which are client utilities shipped with MySQL. However, the generic client section is even read by third-party MySQL related tools such as Percona Toolkit. If a section mentions a specific client, like MySQL dump in the example above, then that option will be set for that client only. There is no difference if an option is passed on the command line or through the configuration file. It does the same thing. The sections can be mixed in the configuration file. This will be important for the include mechanisms to work properly. In the example above, the client section follows a MySQLD section, but right after the client section there is another MySQLD section. This configuration is perfectly valid, although not that human reader friendly. MySQLD in this example will have server option 1, 2 and 5 set. Between sections, or even in a single section, variables can be repeated. In the example above, the configuration file will be parsed in sequence, so at the end of the parsing server option 2 will be set to the value 6. MySQL configuration can include files or directories in any depth. Included files can have includes as well. This is very easy to get messy with. The best practice is to use a single config file for instance, rendered from some kind of automation like Chef, Puppet or Ansible. The problems related not following this best practice is not that much of an issue in MySQL 8, because in MySQL 8 we are able to tell where exactly a variable is coming from, which is not the case for MySQL 5.7 and earlier versions. There is a special option which only makes sense to use from the command line, the dash dash defaults file, which tells what configuration file to read. If defaults extra file is provided, it will be parsed after the defaults file is parsed. This is usually used by startup methods such as init script. Let's do lab 2a together where we will change MySQL configurations through my.cnf. I have the comments.txt open for lab 2a. Let's check if the virtual machine is running. It's not. So let's start up the lab environment. This will be a jiffy for me because I have an extremely fast computer, or thanks to video editing, who knows. But if you are doing this the first time, this will take a while because it will download a bunch of stuff. So if you want to follow along with me in this video, I recommend to pause a bit after this. We are done. This took a bit longer because this is the first lab where we are running with Ansible Provisioner. Instead of installing MySQL manually like in the previous labs, the automation installed MySQL for us, so we are ready to do additional experiments on it. Let's log into the virtual machine. Okay. 
Let's check the MySQL configuration file. There it is. Let's verify that the server ID is indeed what it's configured to. The dash E option of the MySQL client tells the client to execute something right from the command line. It does match, but how did this work? We didn't specify a user, a host name or a password, nothing, it just worked. The reason for that is that we have a client section in the configuration file which supplies the user and the password. It's the same thing as if we would put it in on the command line. Let's use a text editor to change the server ID to something else. I'm going to use Wim. You can use your favorite one. And I'm gonna change server ID to 2, so I put the cursor on the special tool, press DW, like delete word, and then I press colon WQ for saving the file and quitting. Now the configuration in the configuration file is changed. If I check the configuration file, of course right now it will show server ID equals 2. If I check my SQLD, it will still show the old one. Server ID is a static configuration option. So we need to restart my SQL in order for this change to take effect. It's done. And now if we execute the same thing, the server ID will be changed to 2. Let's exit from the SSH session and destroy the lab environment. 